can can we look at some of the the theoretical reasons for this? We've talked about this idea, Robert, that you know some things are going to stimulate immunity, but we can't have immunity going full blast all the time. We need things to bring it down again. Um, what, what what are the cells involved here, and what are the immunoglobulins involved? Okay, L- let me just introduce that, John, by saying that one of the reasons people who are watching this should not be surprised about what they're hearing, perhaps for the first time, is that they would know that if you go to an allergist and you say, I've got hay fever, you're lucky if you leave the allergist without having a series of injections called allergy shots, right? You you know about those, John? I've never actually seen them, but I've I've taught about them, strangely enough. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> well, I've avoided them myself, but um, yeah. it, it's been a standard way of treating allergies, uh, of inhaled allergens particularly. Yeah, desensitizing uh, for, vaccines, yeah. For eight, uh, nearly 100 years. Yeah. Now, why does that work? Well, we now know why it works. It works because the respiratory tract, which is if you breathe things in, the idea is to get the oxygen out of the air and get rid of the carbon dioxide, shame, 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 uh, that we, we make into the atmosphere. And the, uh, at the same time, you're breathing in pollens and viruses and bits of this and that. Uh, and so um, the, the respiratory tract, it doesn't intrinsically know the difference between a bit of grass pollen or a virus. Mm. And so... Uh, it's going to make the same type of immune response or very similar immune response. And I mentioned that the elephant in the room of this local mucosal immunology is suppression, turning off. And the allergists worked this out long before COVID, 100 years before, and they said if we give lots of shots, we turn off that nasty inflammatory response that that person with asthma or hay fever is making to the inhaled pollens or house dust mites. And that's exactly what we've been seeing on that graph, that if you have lots of shots of vaccine, be it flu vaccine or be it COVID vaccine or be it any other sort of vaccine for an inhaled challenge, be it a pollen or a virus, you're gonna turn off your protective immunity. So there's no, no surprise about what's seeing. And in fact, it, as I mentioned earlier, it's been shown with influenza. So we, we knew about this. We should have predicted this. And yeah. when people started getting, it was a panic reaction. Well, probably a commercial reaction because they made a lot of money out of it. But um, uh, Facilitated it, panic, perhaps. Yeah, or we need more vaccine. You know, more must be better instead of less being better. And... Very often, less is better than more, and this is one one example for that. Yeah. So we, we had this crazy situation whereby we were basically going to an allergist or a vaccinologist to get your vaccine or, or your, your allergy shots to turn off inflammation. No different. So what was the mechanism of that? Yeah. Well, you and I uh, are exposed to hundreds of emails a day from people who have been studying this and there's a huge interest in a particular antibody molecule in blood that's appearing in people who have three or more uh, messenger RNA vaccines and it's called IgG4. Now what is IgG4? Well everybody knows in blood there's antibody and they know that antibody can cause mediate protection. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now, the main antibody happens to be a a protein which is given the term IgG, immunoglobulin G. It's now known that immunoglobulin G is made up of four different types, which are called subclasses. IgG, uh, immunologists are incredibly imaginative. You know, only immunologists would... um, certainly mucosal immunologists go to very boring places for meetings and call it IgG1, IgG2, IgG3, and IgG4. IgG4 is present in most people in very small amounts. But if you, the allergists found that when they were, um, when they were giving lots of allergy shots, 
they got a change in the amount of these subclasses. And particularly, the IgG4 one started going up. And they said, wow, that must be the mechanism of suppression of the unwanted um, uh, inflammatory immunity that we're getting from pollens and house dust mite in people with allergic disease. Must be this. And then they looked at the IgG4 molecule and said, hey, this is different to IgG1, 2 and 3. It doesn't promote protection. It actually neutralizes and blocks these other molecules. So they said, game over. It's all due to the fact that there's a distortion of the immune response when you get overexposure to these uh, inhaled antigens, virus or pollens, and it turns off the IgG, the good IgG that you want. But it's not as simple as that. I have a patient, for example, I mean, the amount of IgG4 in someone is a few milligrams. I have a patient who's got 20 grams, 20 grams of IgG4 in their blood, and he doesn't get any infections or any problems like that at all. Uh, he's got abnormal cells that make uh, the wrong IgG4. It's like a tumour, but it's not a tumour so far. So um, IgG4 may or may not have a suppressive effect. But what we do know is that IgG4 is part of the distorted immunity that occurs when you overstimulate a mucosal immune response, either by inhaling a lot, natural infection, for example, with COVID, yeah. or you come from the other side and inject lots of spike protein into the body. And when you put the two together, you're likely to get a switch in the immunity, more of these T regulation cell or T reg cells um, that actually turn off the productive protective cells. And as part of that distortion, you get IgG4 becoming a more significant part of that spectrum of antibodies. Now, everyone's getting carried away about IgG4. Uh, it's a very important marker. And it's incredibly helpful in saying to you, John, look, we really are getting a turn off. Not just are we seeing it in the patients with negative immunity, but we're seeing it in a test tube as a mechanism. But what we're really looking at almost certainly is the T regulation cells dominating in the control of this immune response. And I'll make one more point um, before I forget it. And that is there is another reason why messenger RNA vaccines, in my view, are promoting much more of this negative immunity. And that is, we do not control the amount of antigen. If, if you have, if I, I think if we go back to our, remember that course we did on um, Immunology 101 or something a long time ago. Um, all, still, in, all still available for, for public <laughs> delectation and education. It's not out of date. Um, no. I think in the first one, I would have talked about dose response curves because we did. if I'm talking to medical students and I'm giving a lecture on immunology, I draw on the blackboard uh, a curve that goes like that. And against it is low dose of antigen, high dose of antigen. And in the middle, it's a good dose of antigen. So if you have low doses of antigen, you can get net negative immunity. If you have high doses of antigen, you get net negative immunity. In other words, when you're given a messenger RNA vaccine, you're not actually giving the vaccine, you're actually giving a nucleic acid message to make the antigen. We know, sadly, that this messenger RNA goes to potentially every cell in the body, making every cell in the body a potential factory for making the spike protein. Well, if we were talking about damage and adverse events, we'd talk about that making potentially every cell a target for autoimmune disease because you're putting a foreign antigen on the surface. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about massive, uncontrolled amounts of antigen in the blood. And there's probably some evidence that that in fact is happening, even though we can't measure the exact amount of antigen because who knows how much is being made. And that is that you tend to get a higher level of antibody when you give a messenger RNA vaccine. Uh, and not much, but you get a slightly higher one. And that's, I'm talking about now the ordinary IgG antibody and immediately after it, not downstream after they've had lots of vaccines. So this is saying that you're getting a big boost of antigen. But if you're getting a lot of antigen, 
that, and you're doing it repeatedly, you're going to turn off this mucosal immune response and you're going to distort the immune response so you start seeing uh, IgG4 and we also see uh, various other expression of markers related to T-cell depression turning off the T-cells in the body as well, which we won't complicate things by going into that. So, so it, if, if I remember the increasing levels of uh, IgG4, immunoglobulin G type 4, yes. is a marker for increased activity of suppressor cells, which exactly. are going to reduce the immune response to a particular antigen. Is that basically exactly. correct? Exactly. And the IgG4 may or may not have an additive effect on mm. turning off. Or, or, or interfering with the function of the good IgG4, uh, which yep. is there to protect. <laughs> so in other, in other words, the, the, the yeah. Bradford Hill criteria here are well satisfied, aren't they? We've, we've got the epidemiological evidence that repeated vaccination is increasing hospitalizations. But we've got yes. the mechanism of action. This is entirely plausible. More than that, you would have predicted this from your graphs that you've known about well, for, for, for decades. Uh, Absolutely. I, I think I wrote an article in, in not, not because I'm special, it's just it's what I do. Uh, it, it's no surprise. Yeah, I, I think the only surprise is that people haven't, right at the beginning, said, well, wait a second, be very careful about the way you cycle your vaccines because as night follows day, you're going to end up with net uh, suppression, net, uh, net immunity, uh, negative immunity. Net negative. And you can promote the disease rather than prevent it. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. So we've got, uh, it's just, just mind-blowing. We've got, we've got negative protection and we've got all the side effects. It just, it's just utterly 